It's time to go to the blue side of Merseyside. Everton, a squad with a lot of history. Champions of England nine times and now struggling, fighting against relegation, having to appoint the guy right above me, Sean Dyche, the former Burnley manager, to save themselves from the relegation process. And they did, but... It was close. As you guys know, on the last match day, is it was decided between Leicester City and Everton. And Everton have done it. And they have survived and are remaining in Premier League football. But things have not been too great for Everton lately. Things need to change at this club to be able to get back to where they used to be in the Premier League league table. If we just look at the historical performances, you can see 7th, 6th, 5th. Then down to 11th, but then coming back up into the higher half of the league table. 7th, 8th, 8th, and then the demise started last season. The one before this one, 16th, and then 17th. Obviously, we need to look at what is going wrong at Everton ownership. And also need to go ahead and fix what has gone wrong in this past year 2023 let's do it let's do it before we dive into the analysis of this squad i want to ask you guys something so now that you know that everton have won nine titles in england at the highest division and have won five fa cups can you think of any of the top four top six clubs currently in the premier league uh, out of those ones who have won titles so Let's just put Tottenham aside. Can you think of anyone really there that is going to be having the same faith as Everton in the future? Do you think there is a club out of the likes of City, United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, these types of clubs? Can you think of any of them getting to a point where they might have to fight against relegation rather than fighting for European spots? I'm really excited to see your guys' thoughts in the comments down below because I honestly cannot pick the side that I think could be in danger of getting to that point. Maybe City, if they lose the owners and these 115 charges go through and they fall apart. Maybe. I don't know. First of all, let's go through the formations that Everton have played throughout this season. You can see 3-4-2-1, 4-1-4-1, 4-2-3-1 and even the 4-3-3 or even a 4-4-2 setup for Everton in this season. Also including a 4-5-1. So you can kind of tell that Sean Dyche is just trying to make the best of what he has available at the club at the time. Like whoever isn't injured, yep, you're in. <laughs> Basically, that's how things are going. And honestly, guys... I'll let you know, like, I am not 100% well-versed with Everton. So for this one, I will need you guys in the comments down below to teach me the ways. But I am just looking at data for this video specifically. And of course, I know some things about Everton. I know the fact that Calvert-Lewin and most of the strikers for Everton just haven't performed this season. Their top goal contributor is someone named McNeil. This man who has joined them from Burnley, I believe, at the time. Dwight McNeil has played in a more attacking role lately and has been doing quite well and is probably one of the main reasons as to why Everton have survived. So he is probably someone that we need to build upon. But then when you look at other players who have scored goals, Ivobi is the next one with nine goal contributions. After that, it's their center midfielder, Dokore, who has come in with seven goal contributions. And after that, it's Demarai Gray. So you can kind of tell none of the strikers, yes, none of them are on this list. Like Cavett Lewin, not on a list of top goal contributors. Neil Mopai, who has come in to help in, help in the instance that Cavett Lewin gets injured, which he does a lot of times. We have him who has only come in with like, I don't even know, I'm scrolling down the list and he's not even in there. He doesn't even have two goal contributions. Like, that is insane. This team is lacking attacking power. And at that point, you might be thinking, okay, so you have Sean Dyche, who is someone who is kind of known for playing this rough play style, defense, 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 and whatever happens in the attack happens kind of thing to simplify things. Is this Everton team ever going to be a side that is going to be known for their attacking? Is this team going to be one that you look at and be like, yes, I want to watch their football. They actually play amazing football. And I just don't think that's a thing that is realistic at this point. So we need to play to the strength of this squad. 
But at the same time, we need to make sure that we make the right decisions when it comes to the transfer window. And of course, we need to consider rumors of players coming in and rumors of players going out. So let's start off with the transfers and player contracts expiring and all that jazz. So let's take a look at the contracts running out. We are looking at Lonergan. We are also looking at Seamus Coleman and Tom Davies. Those are the players that are apparently being offered a new contract going into the new year. But then you have players like Begovic, Townsend, uh, Connor Cody, Yeri Mina, and also Rubin Vinagre. All these guys need to be taken out of this team immediately, and I'll do it. Get the hell out of here. Then if you look at the players whose contracts are running out in 2024, they might be sold on in the summer. We are talking about the likes of Idrissa Ganageya. We're talking about Dokore, who, by the way, uh, I listened to a podcast of Troy Deeney, the Watford player, and he was saying Dokore on his day against the best teams was incredible. But for some reason against the bad teams, he just didn't want to perform as well. Really interesting story. Listen to it if you can. It was on Filthy Fellas. And then you also have Demarai Gray, who is uh, his contract is running out in 2024. And then also Ellis Sims. This guy right here, his contract is also running out. So we have to keep all these things in mind. And those players might be some that we have to put onto the transfer list to cash in for Everton. Oh, and by the way, I just realized that players like Deli Ali and Gbamin are coming back from their loan. I mean, I don't think any of these two are going to be important to the team. But I do think one specific player coming back from loan is going to be huge for Everton. Jared Brantwaite. I've seen him play at PSV Eindhoven. The guy is class. His rating is low, but I can actually see him try and fit himself into the starting 11 at Everton. But it'll be a very interesting one to watch. Jared Branthwaite. Can't put into words, really. So here are the sales. Dominic Cavett-Lewin, I'm tired of your injuries, pal. You need to go. Everton needs someone they can rely on. And this whole story has just passed. Your time has gone and you need to move on. Demarai Gray with the contract situation, obviously. Everton would need to sell to cash in on him. And the same goes for Gueye. And of course, Dele Alli should never, ever, 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 ever play in the Premier League again. He's horrible, bro. He is so bad. I watched him play at Besiktas and honestly, guys, I can't believe the downfall of this kid. How can you be so good and then become so freaking bad? It's just mental. Like, honestly, it is. What do you think of the downfall of Deli Ali? Let me know in the comments. But then going down further, Gwamin has left. Sims is apparently linked to Sunderland as we speak. And then Cannon and Ngunku has left, uh, have left as well, which now leaves me to go ahead and change the starting lineup with players that are rumored to join. Everton. Everton are interested in Coventry City star Victor Gioqueres and are seeing a serious competition for Sporting Club de Portugal, another one of his suitors. Guys, we are talking about a player that has scored 22 goals in the championship and has gotten 10 assists, 32 goal contributions in the championship for the Swedish striker. And he could be the one. Everton, go get him. For Coventry, he has done amazing pushed them into the playoffs and sadly lost there and didn't get promotion into the Premier League. But Sporting are interested in him. Everton have to be quick in order to sign this man up. This could be the next big striker at Everton. And for 18 million right here, I'm very happy about the deal. Neil Mopai is obviously, you know, an all right player, but I don't think any team should be led by him. I think Kyokeres would make so much sense for this team. He has decent amounts of pace, great shooting, dribbling, amazing physicality, six foot two tall. So he fits in into this Sean Dyche style of play. If needed, he can be that physical target man up front. And for that, this is an amazing option. Honestly, Everton, you have to get this man signed up. Come on, you have to do it. With Leeds United going down into the championship, Jack Harrison has a 16 million release clause in his contract and would be open to a move to Everton. Guys, that move is happening right now. Now, this will make me change the formation. I'll be honest with you because in order to fit these players in, we might have to get a little bit experimental here. And I will show you what I was thinking. So Jack Harrison walking into this club right here. Amazing signing, obviously, but with Iwobi and McNeil being technically one of the best players at Everton in terms of goal contributions, you now think to yourself, okay, so you can play on the wings, but the best players at Everton on paper are those wingers. So what do you do? Well. 
There's one thing we can do. We can turn Dwight McNeil into a center attack in mid. Now, I know it's not necessarily ideal, but recently he has been playing in a more attacking midfield role rather than being a winger. So in a left attacking midfield role, which obviously would be like somewhere around this area. But then again, like, I mean, if we want to try and fit in some of the best players of Everton into the squad, this might be something that we have to do. And Davies, he is apparently rumored to be sold, actually. I've just seen some rumors. But yeah, Harrison can come in right here and immediately take over. Could be left wing, could be left midfield. But he is now a part of Everton Club. And of course, the setup would obviously not be with Decore on the wing, but with Iwobi. So this could be technically Everton's setup if McNeil or Iwobi is happy to play centrally. And I think I've seen Iwobi play even in like the center midfield position multiple times. So maybe that's the thing that I should do. Yep, I just checked. And Iwobi has played center midfield and center attack in midfield in contrary to uh, McNeil who has played left attack in midfield. So we will be swapping these two around and give Iwobi a run at Cam and McNeil on the right hand side to cut in into his left. Could work out. Actually, I found the solution now. So this could be the setup. Jokeris with McNeil and also whoever comes in into that attacking midfield role playing behind the striker. Yes, it's quite offensive, but we have seen Everton have played in a 3-4-3 formation. And especially with Branthwaite coming in and his exceptional talents and his weak foot being as good as it is and his left foot being so amazing, this could be something that Everton could actually play. We might have to think about this. I want to spice things up. So, you know what? I'm going for it. I cannot believe I'm seeing this rumor. But honestly, it spices up this video massively. It is not just Jack Harrison that Everton are going after, but also Gnonto. Like, I read into it and there are multiple links for Everton wanting Gnonto. Now, he would be unreal. I can't think of Gnonto playing in the championship, honestly. So, for that reason... The boy is going to Everton. If he wants to be a starter, if he wants to be a guy that steps onto the pitch every single time, this could be his opportunity. Wilfried Gnonto just played for Italy, I believe, as well. And he has done well, if I'm not mistaken. He was uh, playing a big part in one of the goals that they scored. But uh, this would be the setup, obviously. I don't know why the freaking formation keeps on changing. Like, it's doing my head in. Uh, and these guys should be swapped around. Yep, there we go. Anyways, so yeah, he comes in into that right attack in midfield position. Could also play on the left. It doesn't really matter which one. But he comes in right there. And honestly, just looking at it right now, this excites me. If this is the formation Sean Dyche wants to implement, the 3-4-2-1, uh, it might actually work with these players. It genuinely could. It's fire. It really is. I can't wait to see how this does. I'm not going to make any more transfers. Let's see season one. First season is done. And we are looking at this team losing two games in a month of May. And against some of the bigger sides, let me see. We beat Spurs. We've lost against Chelsea and Liverpool. It's not necessarily going to be a tough half season, is it? Let's see, Sean. What have you done with this team? 12. Okay, I'll take that. I think that's great. I think if you tell Everton fans next season you'll finish in a 12th position, I don't think they'd be upset. Ideally, they obviously would love to be in the top 10, but the Prem is getting very competitive right now, especially with the money spent lately. So Everton, if you go from 17th to 12th, Hey, that is fine. But going up the list here, we can see Man City have won the league title. And obviously, that is the ultimate goal that we are trying to chase down. And also, of course, the Champions League. But we'll see how that goes on. The team itself right here. Jokeres to a 79. Gnonto, 78. Ivobi 76. McNeil now a right midfielder with a 79. Harrison on a 78. Onana and Dokore enjoying the center midfield. Two very physical uh, players that can play both sides of the game, defense and offense. And Branthwaite, obviously, I would have loved to play him, but the game probably played keen. So that is a bit of an issue. Tarkovsky on the Sean Dyche, he is the one. He plays every game, I guess. And Godfrey in the right center-back position, since he can also play right back or even on the left-back position, apparently. So uh, I'm very happy to have him in there. And then Pickford, of course, you can't let Pickford go. I know there have been rumors about Manchester United and stuff, but you should not let go Pickford if you can. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's very important, but I'm very happy. 
with how the team is looking going into the next year. Now we will have bigger plans in the next season for sure. But Gyokeres is the main man. Mopai, hey, off the bench, 11-1. That is not bad. And Gnonto, the third best in terms of goal scoring. Very happy with this season. Great progress. Let's now climb up into the top half of the table with the next transfers. Honestly, lads, been looking for transfers, but there aren't many out there. So we're going to go after what we believe to be the right decision for a team like Everton. Now, obviously, you want to bring in players that can play there for multiple years, but also have sell-on value. So Sean Dyche is going for a new centre-back. It's Santiago Bueno from the likes of Girona. Now, Girona, as you guys might know, have had a decent season. This team is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I might actually, I might be completely wrong on this. Are they part of the City group? I might be wrong. Anyways, he has played there and the team itself has done quite well and it is in an upwards trajectory right now, which I like to see. So Bueno is coming in. Not, again, not the most pacey center back for sure, but he's six foot three tall, high defensive work rate from Uruguay, and from the Spanish First Division, now he has joined Everton. And I'm really happy with that signing right there. Now, Branthwaite, as much as he's lower rated, I want to give him the time in his starting 11. So I'm going to make sure to let go of Keenan Holgate. I just have to do it in order to give Branthwaite the playtime he deserves. Because I honestly think in this three at the back as a left center back, he could be perfect. So since we have gotten Gyokeres from Coventry City, let's bring his partner into the squad as well. It's Gustavo Hamer. He is someone who has played in the championship last season, managed to get himself 10 goals and nine assists from the midfield positions. I am very excited to welcome this player into our squad. Everton has a new center mid that could possibly take over from Dokore in the future. Alongside Onana, that could be a great partnership. So, Eber is here, 20 million spent on this man, and he's coming in with a rating of 78. That's okay for me. Back up for Dokore, but also someone that can challenge him soon. Oh, actually, I just realized He's higher rated than Dokore already. So Dokore is now the backup. Well, I am seeing something interesting. And that is the fact that Ivobi has said, I feel like I have a lot to prove with my football. And I would like to play in the Champions League. It has always been my dream. I've played in it before and I want to have the taste again. Very interesting. So Ivobi, if you want Champions League, I have to replace you, my friend. And we are replacing you with someone who has gotten three goals and eight assists in the Serie A this season for Bologna. It is Musa Barrow. There aren't many center forwards when it comes to FIFA, so I'm very happy that we could bring in one of them. Musa Barrow will take over Ivobi's position. He comes in with an 80 rating and immediately becomes one of the highest rated players in a team. At Bologna, it seems like he's playing in that left attack in midfield role, so that is just about perfect right here. He brings in a lot of pace into this team, which I am happy about. Welcome to the squad. And now, let's see if a lot of these players can grow past the 80 and push into the top eight. So progress is key. So let's see if we have gotten progress this season. And we were 12th in the last season with Sean Dyche and his squad. And this season, it's the ninth position. Now, I'm happy with that. Next season, though, I need to see this team in the top seven. And to make that happen, we obviously will have to improve the team. Considering that players like Tarkovsky are getting older as well, we will have to bring in fresh players for this team. But Manchester City has gone ahead and done it once more. And our team is actually really good, you know? Like, I mean, the growth in some of the players has been incredible. Barrow now with an 85. Pickford 87, Branthwaite 77, keep it up, son. I will forever keep you in this squad. I don't care what your rating is, but Tarkovsky now 31 years old, 82 rated. Pretty happy with his rating, I have to say. But obviously, we want to go ahead and work into the future of this squad as well. Now, the bench, by the way, is really decent. Like, there's nothing I need to change there. But the starting 11, I'm very, very happy with. It is very offensive, I know. But at the same time, I need this to be exactly as it is and be successful at the same time. So we're going to keep on pushing. Harrison is 27. McNeil is 24. Age-wise, we're looking very good in midfield and in attack as well. So we just need to sort out a few things. And I believe this team can push into that top seven. Now, also, we could be going for trophies like the FA Cup possibly. But Barrow 
24 and 11. My guy, first season, incredible performance. The man from Gambia has shown up. So, a young centre-back that is linked to Manchester United as the backup is coming into the club right now. It is the Zassi from Monaco. Yes, AS Monaco's defender is now part of this Everton squad. He comes in with a rating of, let's see, 83, which I'm pretty happy with. So our back line is going to be looking very good by the end of the year. And I honestly believe this team is going to push into the higher ranks. I'm expecting European football for sure. And here we go. Season done in 2025. Let's see. Come on, lads. I want to see it. Yes, seventh. Okay, so I would have loved to be higher up, but Conference League football is fine for me. Man City win the title again. At some point, obviously, I would love to challenge them. We'll see if that is something that we can make happen. But the front three here is something I really, really like. McNeil on the right with the 85. Midfield looking very, very solid. Gustavo has already overtaken Onana. And that is apparently because uh, Dokore was taking playtime away from him. Had to let Dokore go. So Onana gets all the playtime now. Harrison is looking decent. Branthwaite up to an 80. Defense looking good. Pickford on an 88. As he is now, I believe, 31 years old or something now. And... Giacares is the guy, Barrow, Gnonto, front three doing wonders, Hamer getting involved into the attack, and Onana has gotten himself his best season with 10 assists. Guys, Everton is on the up, and we are now playing in Europe. Let's get it. And to take us to that next level, I want to bring in Noah Lang. I need Champions League football, and I need someone that is going to be a bit more athletic than a Jack Harrison, and possibly can grow even more. So... It is going to be the Dutchman who in the past in his career has had a lot of issues with coaches and everything. Uh, but still, he is going to become our new left midfielder, dropping Harrison onto the bench. Now, they are on the same rating, but I fully do expect uh, the main man himself to go up in his rating quite quickly. So let's sort out the bench and ch uh, check out his stats here. He comes in with 90 pace. Like comparing him to Harrison, you can see more pace, more shooting, more dribbling, more defending, more physicality. Basically just a better player, but somehow at the same rating just due to the passing difference. So Noah Lang, welcome to this club. You better be performing. Or else I'll kick your ass. Lads. We have a European final. Yes, we're up against the likes of Olympique Lyonnais after going ahead and playing against Austria, Wien, and also Atalanta out of all teams. And Sean Dyche has carried this team into a European final with Gjokeres leading the line. Barrow and Gnonto surpassing him in rating, which is interesting. McNeil and Lang also around the same rating as our striker onana 86 hamer 87 and defense looking solid with branthwaite finally pushing up to those ratings that are making me very happy because we need at least like 84 85s in a team to get into those european positions but also premier league lads let's see third let's go we are a champions league club now here's the catch look at that city united everton and spurs and liverpool all within like two points of each other that was an insane season congratulations to everton and the lads we were so close to the title maybe next season we can make it happen as we play champions league footy and i gotta say the front five i guess we need to say now they have done really well. Apart from the center mids, anyone else in midfield and attack has gotten loads of goal contributions. And that's exactly how I want this team to play. So now they get the chance to step it up and win their first trophy. Come on, lads. Everton for the win. Gustavo has done it. Our first big trophy right here, guys. Let's gather some more. Okay, so Napoli has been beaten. And in the league, we have been quite good this season, guys. A lot of draws lately. Can we finally win a game? Yes, we can. But we have lost against Bilbao, but it is enough. Okay, so Napoli, Bilbao, and Marseille on our way to the Champions League final here. And I gotta say, we got really lucky. Guys, this might be one of the technically easiest Champions League of runs we have ever had right here. No disrespect to these teams, but this is incredible. I can't believe we've actually made it here. I thought we were going to go longer since Everton is not... I mean, it takes a lot more work to rebuild this team. 
to become world class, but there it is. 1991, 90, 89 on both wings, 89 in the center, 88 on Onana. He's the captain, apparently. Congratulations. Branthwaite on an 88. Disassi as well. And Bueno, he has finally caught up to the rest of the team. Congrats. And Pickford on a 91. And the bench is actually still pretty good. So, ratings-wise, very happy. And Everton, you have impressed me, I gotta say. So, here are the stats for the players. Gnonto, 38-3. Main guy when it comes to goal scoring, Gukeres with the 32 and 3, and Barrow 26 and 12 from that man right there. McNeil with 18 assists, Hamer and Lang with 10, Onana with 7 for himself. The entire team has done really well, but I think we had too many draws to win the Premier League here. Let me see. No, not the FA Cup. Come on. I wanted to see the Premier League. Oh, first place. Ahead of Liverpool. Oh, there you go. The Merseyside battle for the title. And Everton have done it. Congratulations. It's a close one once again, but that is amazing. The double is on the table, and we could just grab it if we beat this Juventus team. Vlahovic, Juri. Ooh, okay. Chiesa, Sole. Okay. Rovella is still there. Merino, Chuameni. Gatti, Romero, Dragushin and trap in defense. Gatti, I think, is the one from San Lorenzo, if I'm not mistaken. That is an interesting lineup. A lot of great players in there. I don't know if I should be worried or not. So, Onana stepping onto the pitch as the captain for Everton. The blue side of Merseyside has won the league title and now can grab that beautiful one as well. I'm excited to see how this combination of a tall, big striker with Gürkeres and the small Gnonto is going to be working. This could be something special. That's surely mine. Yes, it is. Well done, Gnonto. Ooh. Oh, whoa, whoa. Wow, referee. What the... Okay. I was about to say something right there. Great save by Pickford. I think that was a foul. Juve inside the box. Get it away. Lovely. Oh, no. I passed it straight into my opponent, and Pickford has to dive in once again. The one thing I love about Pickford is every time he makes a save, he just screams at his defense. <laughs> I don't know why he does it, by the way. Must get annoying if you're one of their players. Gnonto, sprinting away from people, just showcasing insane amounts of pace. <laughs> Gnonto! What a magician! Incredible! Oh, that strike is just beautiful! This kid has bags of talent and has shown it against one of the team from his own country. One of the teams from his own country. Italy is watching and Gnonto has just gone mad. All right, here comes Juve now. Inside, yes, lovely work. Gnonto, he actually feels unbelievably quick, by the way. Look at the dribbling on him. The defenders are just falling apart. Gnonto is still going. Come on, son. Come on, far post. You see him. Beautiful. Oh, that needs to go in. Gronto has done all the work for him to just ruin it. Get closer, get closer, faster. Oh, no, that man should have taken a shot, and the ball just lands in front of him, of course. Dusan Vlahovic scores his goal. Man, when he was at Fiorentina, the entire world of football wanted him. Juventus got him, and after that... It was a bit of silence, wasn't it? And now, teams like Bayern Munich are apparently interested in him. It's going to be interesting to see where he actually goes to. Does he stay at Juve or take on a new challenge? After such a short time at Juve already, Vlahovic makes it 1-1. Juve is increasingly taking control over this game, and I do not like it. Great touch there from my defender. Gnonto steps forward. He just runs away. Honestly, guys, he's the fastest player I've ever used on FIFA 23. Look at the pace on this. He's just a joke. He is just single-handedly going to be winning us this Champions League trophy, isn't he? Gnonto once more. 2-0. This time in that right center forward position. Just waiting for his moment to turn on the afterburners and just sprint away from everyone. Oh, bad pass. What the hell? I thought I had them. Oh, please. I needed a tackle. I need him. Okay. All right, lads. This is a back and forth of two teams. I honestly thought I had a good pass on there, but it turned out horrible. None of my defenders were able to catch up. 
Sean Dyche is probably absolutely fuming considering that defense is very important to him and we already conceded two goals. Thank you. Good one. Finally, Hamer into Onana. And there goes Gnonto again. <laughs> you cannot stop him. You can't. You just, just don't even try. He turns back, finds the pass. Jokeres, right foot. Oh, he rifles it in. He makes it look easy. Is, is he the new Zlatan? Hey, who knows? A Swedish striker, six foot two tall, puts the ball into the back of the net. Zlatan has never won the Champions League, so maybe Jokeres can. He steps away from defenders, gets some room, and just no chance for the keeper. On top. Oh my god, this kid! Oh my god! Come on! Oh my god! He's the best! Are you kidding? There is no way he has just done, just done that. I can't believe it. Guys, it's done. This entire rebuild, it was just worth for that moment alone. I, I'm finished. Like, how can it get better than this? How? Legit, like, what can I do? At this stage, this video is done. Nah. That's why. Nah, okay, nah. Honestly, guys. <laughs> I just, this, guy, this guy is just nuts. There is no way. I can't believe it. Wilfried Gronto is the best player I've used on FIFA 23. He, he just is. He just is. Like, legit, I am not cheating. I'm not doing anything crazy here. His shots are just nuts. Like, this is on ultimate difficulty. These are my sliders. Nothing has changed. AI sliders are enhanced so that our opponent does better than ultimate difficulty. And he is still pulling this off. Go on. <laughs> nah, you don't do that again. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> Alright. Just one more goal for you, man. Honestly, guys, this turned out to be one of the most enjoyable rebuilds I've done just because of the gameplay. And I really want to thank the people that are watching the gameplay parts because sometimes magical things happen. And even I can't believe they are happening. And honestly, I'm just glad that I can show you guys that I'm not cheating. Like this gameplay that you're seeing always is going to be an ultimate difficulty making it even harder on myself. But still, I try my best to come up with entertaining moments. And Gnonto today made it easy. He is the hero of this rebuild. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Take care and peace. Gnonto, you're nuts.